hi guys welcome to my channel this week i've decided to go back to a more restricted palette for amber and white we're going to paint objects why because I want to work a little bit more on the, the sense of atmosphere and um, I want to go back to limitations. I still want my shapes and my forms to be the most important part and uh, especially uh, I want to work on things that I use every day. So the first painting is going to be about an object that we love in our house because we use every day and it's the teapot. Let's get started. This week we are painting a monochrome of uh, my favorite teapot. I'm a bit a uh, big uh, tea drinker. The inspiration for this painting came from just uh, a few other many painters basically lots of uh, realist painter, contemporary painters uh, that uh, paint so beautifully uh, lots of everyday actions and objects and um, I'm going back to the monochrome in oil and I'm painting on a, a tiny 9 by 9 inches uh, gesso board panel which is just a, a panel covered in gesso but it's super smooth and um, and then uh, I'm painting on a older scratched out painting and so I have a base of um, a sepia colored uh, ink wash that will, it's that uh, brown and warm tone that you can see directly on the surface and uh, I was thinking perfect because I want some of this warmness to come through my painting as you can see the original picture of my teapot in the kitchen in our house in Milan uh, it's basically almost a monochrome itself and um, I've decided because I want to portray this uh, object that I use every day and it's part of our uh, domestic life I wanted to infuse it with a specific mood and a very thick atmosphere and, uh, and now I am uh, kind of uh, starting to uh, experiment with changing the range of tones I'm using in my paintings to see what kind of feeling and emotion I can, I can give to my viewers to my viewers so uh, basically I am in a spot in a moment of my development where I am trying to push away from my education artistic education that comes from a, a classical uh, education because I studied in a classical atelier and I follow a step-by-step -step approach to painting and drawing and, uh, and, and, and I try to copy realistically uh, from, um, from an image generally, from a photo reference. I, want to, I started from the, this uh, very academic uh, background, but now that I feel that my technique and my uh, skills are at a decent level, I really want to push further. I don't want to just represent uh, exactly what I see but I want to use the the skills that I have and the tools that we have uh, when we paint uh, to express something and to um, give the viewer uh, a feeling and an emotion that uh, can connect uh, the viewer to uh, my painting and in this case for me and it, always, it has always been in all my artistic career and in the things that I like, uh, it's always about uh, time. I have always been obsessed with, uh, with the feeling of time passing and, uh, and, uh, and the idea of you know, our nature, uh, the fact that we are just here for a, a little time and we're just gonna leave uh, and uh, 
and uh, and I have the the fear that um, nothing stays and uh, we're just gonna be gone and so for me my my fascination with art and history of art has always been and that's why also I have studied uh, cons- uh, conservation of, uh, of art and uh, preservation because I am uh, interested in art as an object that can survive uh, the shortness of our lifespan and I think that's you know like a book it's something that uh, comes out of the mind of a of a of a human being and can be uh, transmitted to future generation uh, when the person is not there anymore it's, even if at the same time i am very conscious that even artifacts like paintings have a short span of life and they're not going to stay for that very long and even if we can uh, try to keep them from uh, um, getting ruined from time that's not really the point and I think that artwork have just a longer uh, lifespan than the human person that has created it Uh, at the end I wanted to um, work in a a limited range of tones and as you can see I have I'm using raw amber and white only so there is no black and I am actually not using pure white or pure uh, raw amber as my lights and darks and I am using a limited range in that stays in my dark mid-tones to my light mid-tones so my darkest dark are what usually uh, are uh, dark mid-tones and my uh, lights maybe are a little closer to a real uh, white than my darks to a black but that's just because I did want to uh, do a monochrome with a sense of hope and so that's why I'm pushing a little bit towards my light less than my darks but at the same time um, I am uh, restricting my range so I'm putting this limitation and what this does is that uh, it gives um, the viewer a feeling of atmosphere and it looks like if everything is far away uh, kind of imagine like a fog in front of your eyes and then everything uh, is kind of disappearing so and and that also is reflecting in the way I use my edges and you can see that all my edges are kind of like on the softest side and that helps to give that feeling of uh, of the object being far away and I like that idea of applying this um, concept to uh, an object that we use every day and uh, it's kind of uh, in our domestic life because it should be something that we know very well and we see every day so we we uh, we can touch every day and at the same time I wanted to make it look like you it's just so far away and it's almost a memory of the object so that's where I am trying to pull away from my original reference and from my picture on top of it uh, at the end I also try to experiment with uh, uh, scratching the surface and um, and creating uh, extra texture that looks like um, it's almost uh, like uh, uh, a rock or something that we are um, um, we are scratching to get to uh, a deeper level and that's for me has always been um, very interesting in painting to um, to find a, a layer that is underneath the layer of paint because often I get the feeling that the paint is almost like makeup covering up something but I don't want that to be true I would like for us artists to go and try to find the truth through painting so that's why I feel like when the when the surface underneath somehow comes out from the painting uh, we give a glimpse to the viewer to to the truth that this is not a real object but it's actually a painting and uh, at the same time the warmness of my surface comes through and uh, gives a um, warm feeling to some areas of my painting and uh, and then you can do also the same um, 
with uh, applying the, the paint really thinly. So, and then if you use this fan brush that I'm using right now, this takes away a little bit of the surface and here you can see the warmness and the final piece of the, of the, of the support underneath. So yes, this was pretty dense. I think it was a great little exercise. Actually, it's really tiny uh, painting, so I didn't want it to be hyper-realistic. I wanted it to be more of a, an impression of the object, and I think it was successful in that way. And so, um, yeah, I uh, hope you liked the enjoyed the videos. Please, if you have a question, uh, feel free to write it down in my comments. and. Even if you have ideas for um, if you might, for me for future weeks, I would love to hear from you and uh, have a great Sunday. Bye bye. Thank you for watching and please subscribe, like and share. Bye bye.